So I've gone into uh, Excel and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go onto the Sharper Light menu. So you get an additional Sharper Light menus with various options there. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to produce a table report. So I highlight where I want the report to go, click Table, because this is the first time I've used it, I need to identify who I am. And it's now fired up the Query Builder, which is the main window where you define uh, reports requirements. So it's defaulted to a summary report, which is actually what I want at the moment. And it's also said, oh, defaulted to a killer. But I may have different systems that I'm reporting on. And within a killer, you have companies. So this is the company I want to report against. And there are a number of tables. So for example, in a killer, you have things like sales uh, information sales invoices, purchase invoices and so on, and accounts, of which one of mine is the ledger, which contains the general ledger uh, transactions. But because I use that a lot, I actually keep that as a favorite, so to save me having to find it from the list. So I'm just going to select that as the ledger, and then it populates the selection pane with a list of all the available fields. So I'm going to choose account code, account name, and base value. And because this is a summary report, Sharper Light has predicted that I wanted to total the base value by account code and name, which is exactly what I want to do in this case. So I'm going to click OK, and then Sharper Light will now fetch that data from the database, and then I can use simple Excel techniques to just format the data how I would like it to appear. So I've just lined up all the figures. Now that is actually a, uh, a total of all of our transactions by account, uh, which is maybe it have some use, but in reality you probably want to be uh, sort of filter that information in some way. So I'm going to actually edit the query. So I'll go back into it, and it's pulled up the data, the query that we'd already defined. And the first thing I'm going to do is just restrict it to uh, profit loss accounts, which in a killer are called account types. So I drag that into the filter pane, and I can ask a Sharper Light for a list of available options. So I'm going to choose my profit and loss accounts. Happy with that. And click OK, and we've now restricted it just to our profit and loss accounts. Well, that's fine, but again, these are totals of all of the transactions on our account. So we might want to put some parameters in. So I'm going to put some extra fields, just tapping away in Excel. So let's uh, put some samples in just to get us going. And then I put in the periods, in the killer format. And then I go back to my query again. And I'm going to add some new um, filters. So I'm going to drag the account code over and I'm also going to drag the period over. And the account code I want to go from there, as you can see, cell C5 to cell C6 and it gives you a little clue as to what that actually means. And the period number from here to here. Okay. So if I now click OK, it's now constrained that information to um, to those periods for those accounts. And obviously now I can change these values. So if I change the uh, value, it will refresh it. If I change the account numbers that I'm interested in, it will refresh the, uh, the, the formula. And in fact, it's slightly cleverer than that because if I double click on that, it will actually give me a list of account numbers that I can pick from a menu because Sharper Light's clever enough to know that that's related to, an, that cell is in Excel is related to an account code, so it's given me that option. So let's uh, pick our uh, expense accounts. Okay, so we've got a list of expense accounts here, and we've now got a report that's effectively showing our breakdown of costs for a particular given range. But we might be interested in actually um, drilling down into that information. So as well as um, showing the summary, I can double click on it and choose to do a detailed drill down. So it will pull up a list of all the fields in the table. So I might want to add transaction date, 
transaction reference, the description, uh, the journal number, and perhaps the period as well onto that item. And I can click OK. And it will now give me a list of all of the transactions making up, oops, making up the £152 that are on my summary report. And I could sort uh, these into different orders if I wanted to using the, uh, the column headings. I could also group them. So, for example, I might want to know what the total is by particular transaction references, for example, which I can also do. Okay. But that's fine, but the problem with that is every time I want to do that drill down, I've got to um, reinvent the wheel and choose the, 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 the fields. So in reality, what you probably want to do is to uh, define some drill downs. So Sharper Light gives you the ability to do that, but before I do that, I just need to define the name of the period uh, selection. So I'll call it per per. And then we go into uh, drill down. You'll see the significance of why I just did that in a second. And I'm going to create a new drill down, which I'll call uh, transactions. And I'll edit the query. So it will use the main query as the basis for it. In this case, I want to make it a detailed report, and I want to add transaction date, transaction reference, description, journal number, and perhaps period as well. And I want the base value to be at the bottom, so I'll drag that down. But this is where the, the, the sub-query needs to be related to the main query. So if I didn't change this, it would give me the same master set of data. But what I actually want to do is to use the account code from the main query and the period range I want from the period parameters on the reports. Okay, so I've done that now. So I click OK. And what should happen now is when I double click on that, I've now got a new menu option called transaction, which when I click it, it will give me the, um, the list of uh, transactions per the, um, the drill down that I've just defined. And I can group again that or sub sort or subtotal, etc., as I wanted to. But that drill down now is sort of permanently there. So if I, if I drill down on something else, the same information will happen again. So rather than having to redefine that drill down every time I want to use it, you can sort of embed it in the report. OK, so that report's sat in Excel, which is fine for everybody that's got uh, Excel and uh, can sort of can navigate around it. But you might actually want to deploy that as a web-based uh, report. So again, I go into the query. And what I need to do now is to go into the publisher to actually publish that as a report. So I'm going to create a new report. which uh, we'll call uh, cost break down. I'll put sharper light webinar so I can remember which one it was. Uh, cost breakdown. Uh, we'll take off the uh, security so that anybody, all of my users can use it. And when they run the report, this option here, prompts enable, if I take that off, it will use the default prompts that are on the report at the moment, so that the user won't even have to enter a range of accounts, etc. And the other thing I'll do is I'll change uh, the chart options so that when uh, the chart is output, it's going to output it as a donut, um, which you'll see in a minute, sort of a fancy pie chart, I suppose. And we don't need the legend because all of the uh, slices of the donut will be um, will be uh, marked uh, anyway. So I've said OK to that, so it's now saved it. So I've now got this report that's available as the web. And what um, it very handily does is it gives you the names of all of the links that are used to call up those reports. So if I just copy this link here, this URL, and go into my browser, paste that in, then I will be able to see my uh, cost report, which is currently zoomed, shrunk down, so I'll put it up to full size showing me all of the uh, breakdown of that uh, 
those costs. And again, I can then drill down and look at the transactions based on the uh, individual, um, based on the report that was defined in Excel. So it's remembered the drill through as well as the basic report. So you can see the core report here, showing me all the details, and it's showing me the transactions. And as I mentioned before, uh, there is also uh, the uh, option to have a chart version of that. So I can choose the chart option, go into my browser, paste that in, and it should now build a donut showing me the breakdown of all of those costs. And I can hover over particular costs. So again, if I'm interested in that car mileage, I can click on it, and the drill down is now available on the um, on the donut or the graph as well. And in fact, you can do dynamic graphs uh, from these reports if your permission allows you to do them. So you might want to do, for instance, a line chart based on that as well, um, showing the information in different formats. OK, so that's basically showing you how you can create a simple report. didn't take me very long. Uh, we're only 20 minutes in. Uh, perhaps I'm a bit of a fast talker. Um, and showing you how you can actually publish that report through to the web uh, and still retain all the drill down facilities as well as having the uh, additional uh, benefit of the, um, the graphs as well. So if we go back into Excel now, I'm going to show you one that I've uh, made earlier. So I'll go back into Excel. Oh, I'll just uh, close down some of these spare windows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up uh, the profit and loss report, which you saw earlier. You actually saw this, albeit the right hand half of it. It was a bit wide to fit onto uh, PowerPoint. But essentially, on the front page, we've got some uh, graphs uh, which have been generated using Excel and some narrative that's been generated. Again, this is judicious use of uh, Excel. But the whole report is linked to these parameters that are in these cells here. So if I change that period number to period 4, take a few seconds to uh, refresh the report, but you'll see that the graph changed shortly uh, with the new figures from the... Um, the new period. And the whole report has been refreshed as well to show you that information for, for the uh, report. But these formulas, um, things like the variance, are obviously going to be calculations of A6 minus B6 and so on uh, in terms of the percentages. But hidden below that, there is actually uh, some hidden information, which I'm going to lift the veil on my report slightly. Uh, sorry, did I hide them again? I think I probably did. Better than a second. Um, but basically, this uh, report has got these hidden columns here. Now, these hidden col uh, uh, rows, even these hidden rows, have come from other fields on there. So, for example, the the company name, which is this one, Rob Demo, is actually on our narrative. Uh, sheet in cell B1. So if I just pop over to that and look at now B1, you can see it's hidden, it's white on white, so you can't actually see it. So a little Excel technique there. And our starting period is a named uh, cell of the period year with the period uh, calculated with some zero padding, which are these two fields, period year and period period. So all of this is a bit of Excel jiggery-pokery, but the important thing is, from a sharper light perspective, is when we actually use the formula to calculate the total of a base value, it's going to do it for A23 company, A24 ledger, S6 account category, which is over to the right, and then the range of periods is A25 to A26, so for those periods. But that means I can use that same formula to use the last years because all I need to do is to do something in Excel to take one off the year number and use the same periods. And the same for the year to date where I basically change the first period of the range to one and the last period is the current period that I want to report on. But I'm still using the same formula. So in fact on this report the only uh, difference is where uh, something is a credit we use sum of base credit which is reversing the sign of the total and sum of base debit, which is exactly the same, except it doesn't reverse the sign. 
So that entire report actually con constitutes only two Sharper Light formulas and some Excel, um, you know, formatting and other formulaic stuff to actually generate the uh, the rest of the report. But it still has all the drill downs and everything else that you have, and in fact you can make more complicated reports such as balance sheets, uh, where there's some more complex accounting uh, treatments needed in order to. Uh, uh, calculate prior profit loss and so on from the uh, system. Okay, so that's uh, showing you sort of how a report might look, a real report may look once it's been um, uh, sort of created and uh, sort of uh, finished off. Um, you can actually deploy that as well as a web sheet. There's also a special function in Sharper Light called Detach Formulas which will remove the connection between the output, i.e. the calculated report, and the source data. So if you wanted to create a snapshot Word report pack and distribute that, you'd use the detach formulas uh, option to do that. The final thing I wanted to show you uh, was showing you the, the dashboard feature. So basically, I'm just close some of these uh, windows. In here, I've created a dashboard uh, which basically shows you, uh, it might not fit very well because I was using it on a <laughs> slightly uh, larger resolution screen when I designed it, but basically it's showing me a mixture of things. So here we've got uh, sort of turnover by customer or by debtor by period. Here we've got a profit and loss report by project uh, scrolling along, and here we've got a similar cost breakdown uh, report to the um, to the donor that you saw earlier. So again, if I wanted to look at legal fees and drill into the transactions making up that, then I can have a look at that um, just by uh, the same way. So obviously using this technique, you can combine a whole series of uh, panels and panes to actually create a whole view of your business um, to give to appropriate stakeholders and other users within the, uh, within the organization.